Welcome to Conversations from the Edge, where we learn about faculty research interests here at NJIT. I'm Donald Sebastian, Senior Vice President for Research and Development, here in Cullimore Hall, home of our uh, Department of Mathematical Sciences, with a new member of our faculty, Ji Ming Lo, Associate Professor who comes to us from having worked at AT&T Laboratories in a long uh, career, a well-traveled career, uh, New Zealand, Singapore, Chicago, uh, New York City area. Uh, so welcome to our campus, welcome to our faculty. We'd love to learn more about how you came to find us and what attracted you to come work here at NJIT. Well, now, now is a good time for people doing statistics and data analysis. And um, when the department approached me, I, they convinced me that uh, NJIT was um, interested in growing the statistics group, and um, and I decided to come to, to help with this uh, growth. So this is a, an old field, and yet a field that's taking new turns and twists, as we now have massive amounts of data, uh, and in many cases, no fundamental model by which to begin to get some information out, out of that. Tell me a little about the applications in statistics that you're most interested in, and what your research angle is to solve these problems. Well, my research interest is in spatial statistics. Um, that means statistics that has location data in it. And um, what I'm trying to do is to try to use the location data to try and improve the inference and data analysis. So when you talk about location, do you mean location like Chicago versus New York? Or do you mean location like position in the brain when you're doing the neural imaging? Actually, both. So it's. Um, Locations could be locations in geographical space, um, locations in the brain, um, activations in, in the brain are, are locations. And the idea is that uh, locations that are close together are more correlated, and, and so might provide information and improve estimation and things like that. So we have a lot of activity here at NJIT in the introduction of information technology into the healthcare system. It seems to me that right now the biggest focus is on the business systems. How do we get more efficiency of operation through uh, digital record storage and, and facilitating communication. But ultimately, this has to move us in the direction of improved quality of health care, not just efficiency. I'm wondering how the work that you do will ultimately connect into better uh, decisions uh, in the operating theater, better decisions by physicians. How do you think it's all going to shape up to help out ultimately patients like me? Um, so, for example, um, I've been working on uh, a research project where we are interested in the locations of fast food restaurants in New York City and how that correlates with um, the ethnicity of the census block, the income level and so on. And the idea being uh, uh, consumption of fast food um, may be a factor towards obesity. And, and so research such as these will help people understand better the factors affecting um, obesity and as well as other diseases. So statistics is one of those areas where people think it's cut and dry. It's all about standard deviations and chi-squared tests and things like that. But you're making it come to life. You're connecting this to real-world problems. How do you convey that in a classroom where I imagine the textbook materials are still old school? Right. So um, I think it, it comes across in terms of the examples that I can use, um, trying to motivate the reasons for studying standard deviation and, and things like that. And um, for more advanced courses, I will be able to introduce new methodology to the class that that are not found in textbooks, for example. Tell me a little bit about your industrial experience and how has that shaped your academic viewpoint now that you're an independent researcher? Right, so um, during my work at um, AT&T, um, I focused a lot on actually the applications rather than the theoretical aspects of, of the discipline. And, and so um, much of my research has been shaped by both. I, I try to mix the two, uh, understanding the theoretical aspects of, of, a, of a method as well as um, the, the applied problems that are involved. So there's nothing like real problems to drive cross-disciplinary collaborations. Have you taken a look around here to see where are some of the you know, researchers and, uh, and academic areas that would be most useful to you in building your research? Yes, um, so um, I, I've done work in astronomy and, uh, and obviously in public health. So those are uh, areas that I can um, look into. Um, and then there's a lot of uh, collaborations between computer scientists and statisticians as well. Tell me a little bit about the work in astronomy. Can it all connect to our uh, folks, our solar physics group? 
Um, the, the work that I did was actually looking at the uh, locations of some of these uh, objects in space called absorbers. Mm -hmm. And we want to look at how clumpy they are. Um, and so I developed a method to, to estimate the clumpiness of the data and the range at which this, this uh, clumpiness occurs. The idea being that so that people can, um, astronomers can figure out which part of their models they can um, fine tune and, and things like that. So there you have it. Applied mathematics, but applied mathematics that works in innovations in healthcare, work even in understanding the universe so that we are, in fact, living a sustainable lifestyle. That's another conversation from the edge here at NJIT, where we make science work forever. Mm -hmm.